Hello and welcome to this CDP Studio tutorial. CDP Studio supports a wide range of industrial input-output hardware from different vendors. There is a series of videos that show how to set up and use these vendors' I.O. modules in CDP Studio applications. We use the same interface in all these videos, and in this video I will show you how to create it. Start by creating a system and choose application type GUI. Select the application that was added and click Design Mode. First, we want to show the state of the I.O. server, whether it is online or offline. We do this by adding two labels. Double-click the first label and edit it to say I.O. server state. Double-click the second label and edit it to show two dashes. We can use the Control key to select multiple items. First select one label by clicking it, then hold the control key down and select the other label. Let go of the control key. With both labels selected, find the font point size and set that to 22. You can use the mouse scroll wheel to adjust numerical values up and down. Click on the toolbar icon to lay out horizontally. This will add a horizontal layout around the objects. In the object tree, rename the widgets so they are easy to find later. We name the first label state text and the second label current state. Next, we want to use sliders to control an analog output and visualize an analog input. The input and output range should be from minus one to one. First, we add a group box and edit it to read analog output. We then add a slider into the group box. We resize the group box to make it easier to work with. We want the slider to be horizontal and to have a particular look, so we make some changes to the default values. In the slider properties, we search for val and change min value to minus one and max value to one. This defines the allowable range for the slider. We then search for orientation and set it to horizontal. Search for tick and set tick pause to ticks above. This will cause small indicator lines to show along the value axis. The number and length of the lines can be adjusted by properties, such as major ticks and major tick length. Search for num and set num pause to numbers show. Specify how many decimals each number shall have by adjusting num precision. In this demo, we want num precision to be 2. Search for CDP and set CDP send to on slider move. This makes the slider send changes continuously when the slider is moved. Look in the help documentation to find which properties control the various features of a widget. With the widget selected, you can press F1 to go to the help page for that widget. In the object tree, rename the group box to outputs group and the slider to analog out. We also want to show the raw unscaled value of the I.O. So we drag in two more labels and position them under the slider in the group box. The first label should read raw value and the second label should show double dashes. We then add two horizontal spacers, one in front of raw value and another behind the dashes. When put in a layout, this will make the raw value center nicely under the slider. To add the raw value and the spacers to a layout, click the first spacer, then hold the control key and click the raw value label, then the dashes label and then the spacer. Select the layout horizontally icon from the toolbar. Select the group box and click the Lay out vertically icon. This will make all the items in the group box stack nicely below each other. We now rename the recently added objects to keep the object tree nice and tidy. Copy the group box and paste it to the right. Relabel the copied group box to analog input. Select the slider inside the analog input and untick 
the enabled property, as we don't want this slider to accept any user input. Rename the analog input and all its widgets in the object tree. Select the two group boxes, then click Lay out horizontally to make them stack nicely next to each other. We also want to control and visualize digital values. We drag in a checkbox and set the text property to digital output. Copy the digital output and paste it to the right. Change the text to say digital input. In the properties for the digital input, untick the enabled checkbox so it will not accept user input. Add horizontal spacers to the left, in the middle and to the right of the checkboxes. Select the first spacer, then hold the control key down and select the checkbox, the middle spacer, the other checkbox and the last spacer. From the toolbar, select Lay out horizontally. Rename the recently added objects in the object tree. Drag in an event list. This will show events that come from all the connected applications. Events can be alarms or changes to properties. Right click the event list, select column selection. From the rightmost column, remove everything, then add date status, level, and text. Click OK. To make all the widgets align nicely, click the central widget in the object tree. In the toolbar, click Lay out vertically. Save the form by hitting Ctrl S. The user interface is now ready to be connected to an I.O. Make sure to watch the other videos that show how to connect this user interface to various IOs. That was all for this CDP Studio tutorial.